thank you to the organisers for inviting me here tonight to uh, talk about some of our research. Um, as Owen implied, we actually haven't started the research yet. We've recently got a grant, but hopefully we'll kick off in one to two uh, months, and hopefully I'll get the opportunity to come back sometime to update you all on the, uh, on the progress of our work. So I just wanted to begin uh, by outlining a procedure which uh, some of you are probably very familiar with, which is prostate cancer biopsy, which, at least in the early stages of uh, prostate cancer diagnosis, tends to follow a PSA blood test and a digital rectal examination. And then the procedure itself, which is illustrated on the bottom right uh, image uh, picture there, is... Um, uh, a needle that's inserted into the prostate via the back passage, and um, the needle itself is attached to a ultrasound probe, um, which provides the doctor who's doing the examination um, an image which he, can he or she can use to uh, navigate and place that needle in a particular uh, position. And during the uh, test, a number of tissue samples are collected, and these are sent off for analysis by a pathologist. Um, firstly, to determine whether the cancer is present at all. Um, and if it is, then to uh, give a score that we call the Gleason grade, which is uh, closely connected with the aggressiveness of uh, cancer. Uh, we also get an estimate of the amount of disease or tumour um, size from this. It's a very common procedure. It's difficult to estimate how many are done in the UK, but it's somewhere between 55 and 85,000 per year um, in the UK. In the USA, it's upwards of a million each year. And it's the closest thing we currently have to a definitive test for prostate cancer. But as some of you uh, will be aware, uh, at the very least, it's an uncomfortable procedure, and many men find it painful and uh, stressful. There's also some very well-documented um, technical limitations of this technique, and some of these relate to the limitations of the ultrasound images that are, are, are um, fed back to the um, doctor who's performing the procedure and helping him or her to navigate. On the right-hand side of my slide here uh, is an example of an ultrasound image. This is a doctor's eye view, and you should be able to see a needle which shows up bright coming in from right to left. It's fire, being fired into the prostate. But we've only got a um, cross-sectional view uh, through the prostate. Also, um, cancer, by and large, just can't be seen on ultrasound images unless it's very obvious, a large tumour. So the procedure is essentially performed in a blind um, fashion with very limited information about where the cancer might reside in the individual patient. Also, the prostate moves and deforms. It's a squashy organ. So uh, as we move our ultrasound probe around, the prostate itself is deforming and, and moving. And this all adds up to make uh, accurate needle tip placement very difficult in practice, even for an experienced clinician. And the implications of all of these errors, if you like, are firstly that there's, it's quite common to get inconsistency between uh, different doctors, different hospitals, and even different visits of the same patient to the same hospital uh, and the same doctor on different occasions. Uh, in about one in ten uh, patients, cancer is missed altogether, and it's a particular problem in early stage disease. We've got very small tumours uh, that are just uh, not... Um, the needle doesn't... Um, uh, pick them up at all. And um, more profoundly, the cancer is incorrectly diagnosed in terms of this Gleason grade and the amount of disease. And recent studies have shown that uh, it's wrong in about two to four out of ten patients. The lower end of this range, about two in ten patients, that error will have some impact on the treatment options that they are um, actually offered. So the aims of our uh, project are to build and test a prototype um, ultrasound system that uses a relatively new type of uh, ultrasound imaging called three-dimensional 3D uh, ultrasound imaging. Um, and this will be based on the research scanner shown on the, on the right there. And I'll explain in a moment a little bit more about what 3D imaging actually means. It's an 18th 18 month project, as I said, uh, we've yet to start. And the end goal is to get to a point at the end of the project where we can allow uh, doctors to perform high accuracy targeted needle placement during biopsy. At least demonstrate this um, 
using a, a small patient study. So this is a, a picture of um, the probe, that, the ultrasound probe that we'll use with the needle mounted on the, on the top there. And it looks pretty much identical to a standard probe that's used for this procedure. Um, but you'll notice the red uh, thing here, um, which is actually a 3D position sensor which measures uh, where the um, probe is in three-dimensional space. And you can think of this as being very much like a GPS system in a, in a car sat-nav to locate the probe in this case, and hence locate the needle tip. The other difference, which you can't see, is in the head on the left-hand side here, um, is a small motor which moves the ultrasound transducer, as shown here, um, allows the ultrasound view to sweep through the prostate so that we can build up a three-dimensional image, and that provides much more information for uh, navigation to allow accurate um, targeting. Now, in terms of targeting, there's a number of ways that we might be able to do this using this kind of system. Uh, the simplest way is to just use a standardised biopsy plan. Now, this is the standard thing that's, that clinicians try to do at the moment. There's a, um, an example shown on the right there, um, which is... Um, just a, a series of targets um, spread throughout the prostate, um, and our aim is to try and target each of those more accurately using this system than we can do uh, at the moment. We could also use a map of previous biopsy samples that were obtained on a previous uh, occasion to go back, perhaps, and target regions that weren't targeted before, particularly when we might have a patient who um, has got a strong suspicion of having prostate cancer, but the biopsy has shown no evidence of that. We might also, um, for monitoring purposes, want to go back and, and sample the same position, perhaps in a tumour that we know as it uh, exists and we've detected before, um, so that we can reliably go back and see whether that cancer is actually progressing in any way. The second uh, uh, way is to um, use something called magnetic resonance imaging, or MR imaging, which is becoming, starting to become uh, available now in, in UK uh, hospitals, particularly the larger uh, centres. And this is much better than ultrasound at identifying prostate cancer. It's not perfect, but it certainly uh, can highlight suspicious regions in many cases. So when that's available, we could use that to actually target. And there's an example on the right-hand bottom right of a, uh, of a MR image here. Uh, and the red arrow is quite subtle, but the red arrow um, signifies a, a small cancer that's shown up um, dark. So one of the technologies that we'll be invoking in this project to, uh, to be able to do that is um, a method which is quite involved and sophisticated uh, in com computing terms um, that allows us to take information from an MR image, i.e. where uh, a tumour is, and translate that onto the ultrasound images uh, that we obtain using our biopsy system. And this is an animation of... Uh, that in action uh, from some previous work that we've done in the context of um, prostate cancer therapies. And you can see this 3D model, which has been generated from an MR image of the prostate. The red blob in the middle is a, is a tumour. And uh, this is fitting to some ultrasound images so that the two are well aligned. And once they're aligned, we can actually go in and target that, that tumour, um, hopefully accurately. Now, one of the challenges in this kind of uh, task is to compensate uh, for the motion and deformation of the, of the prostate gland. As I said earlier, it's a squashy organ. And the way in which we uh, tackle that is to use um, some computer modelling to actually predict how the um, prostate gland will deform. And you can see an animation of, of that there. There's a real ultrasound image on the right-hand side. And the balloon, which is at the, um, at the bottom uh, here, this... This is a balloon surrounding the ultrasound probe, and that's being expanded. And you can see the prostate's being, uh, which is this peanut-shaped uh, region, um, is being pushed up and squashed. So, and this kind of compensation is essential if we want to do accurate needle placement. So just to conclude, in this project, uh, we're aiming to combine a series of technologies, 3D imaging, advanced computer modelling, um, 3D tracking of the ultrasound probe, and various other image analysis techniques that our lab have, have been uh, developing to improve uh, prostate uh, cancer biopsy. 
and the anticipated benefits of this, we hope, will be that the procedure itself becomes much faster and easier to perform, which is particularly important for uh, junior uh, clinicians. Improved re reproducibility um, and precise tissue uh, sampling locations can be recorded um, for future use. We also, I, I talked about targeting. Um, we hope that this system will really allow us to, uh, for the first time, uh, do targeting either using a previous biopsy map or an MR image once uh, it becomes available. And um, overall, these things add up to hopefully a reduction in the number of biopsy samples and biopsy procedures that are actually performed. Because fewer needles plus better navigation, we believe, would lead to a, uh, a shorter and less traumatic uh, procedure. Also, um, we'd hope that the system would allow more accurate uh, grading, which is, of course is extremely important for patient management and would lead to better um, assignment of treatment options. So we're very grateful, obviously, for the generous support that we've got from the prostate cancer charity for this, uh, for this work. And it kind of fits a gap, really, uh, of applied research. A lot of our research tends to be earlier stage, um, more basic, if you like, but this grant will allow us to uh, really try and push this kind of technology, that much of which we've already developed, through to clinical use and, uh, and, and test it on patients. Thank you very much. Thank you.